Welcome back, everyone. It is Sunday sit-down time. We've got a special guest joining us tonight for Sunday sit-down. Brand new Mizzou baseball coach, Carrick Jackson. Carrick, it's been a whirlwind of a few weeks for you. Thanks for making some time for us. I appreciate you having me on. Yes, it has. Yeah, you know, kind of tell me what has this past few weeks been like. I'm sure you're, you're trying to get settled in Columbia, moving from Memphis. Kind of take me through it. Yeah, you know, I mean, the biggest thing is getting the staff in place and then reaching out to all the kids on the roster, reaching out to the kids that are coming in, uh, reaching out to recruits that are coming in next year and trying to mend. And, and build those relationships and get those guys on board to understand what we're about. And, um, and then once we kind of get all that going, then it's hitting the ground running and starting recruiting for younger kids. Um, so um, it's, it's kind of a, one of those deals where you got a lot going on at one time and you just got to uh, whack-a-mole it. So. Well, tell me about, you know, your conversation. You mentioned the players that have been here already. You know, kind of tell me about your conversations with those players and what, what you've been learning about where the program's at right now. I think the biggest thing with them is just letting them understand what we're going to be about, what our culture is going to be about, how important our culture is going to be with regards to putting ourselves in a position to be successful um, and, and making sure that it's a fit for them. Um, because what I do understand is they weren't recruited to this. They weren't recruited by me. They need to understand what we're about. And if it's a fit, we want them on board. And if it's not, we understand why they choose to go someplace else yeah. so ultimately we have to have the guys that understand what we're about and how we're going to go about our business that's going to allow us to be successful well tell me what is Carrick Jackson all about what's a Carrick Jackson run program all about so at the end of the day for me it comes down to something that's very simple as this is a people business that involves baseball and not a baseball business that involves people mm -hmm. I know we're in the SEC I know people talk about the pressures and the meat grinders of that but at the end of the day we're still working with people and these young men have to know that our job is to pour into them the best that we can to put them in the best position to be the best version of themselves and as long as we do that the baseball part of what we do is easy um, and so we have to stay diligent on that they have to understand that that's important because again you're going to go through enough stresses in just going out and trying to compete that you don't need to worry about what the relationship is between us and them mm -hmm. well tell me when when you hit the field what do you want the mark of a, of a baseball team to be when, when they're on the field what do you want people to see when your team gets gets on the diamond gritty Mm -hmm. Gritty that we're going to compete. You know, the, the, the big message to all of our guys is if you don't have that dog in you, you can't play here. <laughs> Plain and simple. This is the wrong place. It'll be an awful experience for you. You have to have that dog. You have to understand that the most important thing that we have is opportunity. And if opportunity is not enough for you, then you probably need to go someplace else. And so it's going to be a dog fight from the first pitch to the last pitch. Um, and for somebody to beat us, they're going to have to do just that. They're going to have to beat us. We're not going to give anything away, and we're going to fight you from – first out to the last out. Well, I could tell, you know, that press conference, that had to be a whirlwind of a day. When you step up there, I can tell how much this job means to you. You know, tell me, you know, from your perspective, it's, it's been sitting for a few weeks now that you've had this. You know, what does this, having this position mean to you? It, it means everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I said, this is my third head coaching position. Um, and in other positions, you're, you're excited to be a head coach and you're excited to run a program. But when it's something that you've always dreamed about, something that's always been a goal of yours, to be able to have that goal be accomplished, and it's surreal. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it makes this place that much more special and this opportunity that much more special. Uh, so now getting in here and kind of getting my feet wet and knowing every day I'm putting the black and gold on and, mm -hmm. and going out and representing this, I couldn't ask for anything more. Well, it's obviously not your first time at Mizzou. You worked as an assistant with Tim Jamison. You know, tell me, during those years, what did you see about the potential of what, what this Mizzou program can be? You saw a lot of success in those years. Yeah, you know, the biggest thing for me was, I think, when we made that transition to the SEC, there was a lot of people that doubted whether or not we're going to be able to be successful. And um, year one, 2013, the goal for me was, hey, let's make the conference tournament. And we did. Mm -hmm. uh, 2014, we didn't. But then in 2015, we were on the rise. We won six out of ten weekends. We were ranked as high as 12th in the country and things were really really going in the right direction and we had the right guys on the field that knew what we needed to be about and so I was excited about it and ultimately fam family decisions had to take me away from it at that, at that time but just the idea of knowing that we could be successful for me nothing's changed um, and, and now that coming back here we have to instill that same belief and philosophy in the people that we're recruiting and not only people that we're recruiting but the people that are supporting us mm -hmm. and I think they understand that we can get there and so we're excited about where we're going. Well, I know you're from my neck of the woods in, in St. Louis there. You know, wh what is growing up in St. Louis and, you know, growing up, I'm sure, watching Mizzou kind of give you an understanding about recruiting here in Missouri? Well, what's your understanding of recruiting here in Missouri? Well, I think the first thing, like you said, being from St. Louis, is a baseball town, mm -hmm. right? Like yes. we know. So baseball <laughs> is, is the love of St. Louis. And so being able to bring that over here and, and knowing that there's kids in the state of Missouri that are playing baseball and love baseball as well, and that has to be our first priority, lock the borders down. Don't let people, the good players in 
our state, don't let them leave our state. Are we going to get everybody? Probably not. Is everybody a fit for us? Probably not. And I think that's the one thing that people have to understand. I'm not necessarily going after the best player in the country if the best player in the country doesn't fit what we want to do. Um, I'm okay with pod passing on that guy. And there's, oh, why didn't you go after this guy? Maybe he wasn't a fit. Maybe he just didn't want to come. But we are going to do ourselves a service by making sure we attract the best players in the state of Missouri. When you look at what you were able to do, obviously, you know, coached at Southern, coached at Memphis, what, what, what were you able to do to, to turn around those programs and have those successful seasons that you saw? What did you, what did you learn from that time? Culture. Mm -hmm. Culture. Um, coming in day one, making sure everybody understood that culture wins. Culture is sustainable. Culture will allow you to have sustainable success. So that's ultimately what we want to be able to do is put ourselves in a position where we high, have a high level of success, but we have a high level of success for a long period of time. Well, obviously, the College World Series, you've probably been watching, has been going on the past week. You know, what, what kind of inspiration does that give you when you see, you know, a lot of SEC teams having a shot in regionals and obviously in the World Series itself, you know? What kind of inspiration does that give you for where you want to take this program? Well, o Omaha is the ultimate goal, right. right? And when you're coaching at this level, that's what you're you're about, and that's where you want to be. And and that's the one thing when you talk about the SEC. If you go through a 30 30 game SEC schedule, you know you're prepared for regionals, mm -hmm. you're prepared for super regionals, and you're prepared for Omaha. Now, obviously, when you get to Omaha, you got the eight, eight best teams in the country playing at a peak level, but. It's no different than three consecutive weekends that you're playing in the SEC. So the idea of going through the SEC prepares you for that. And so that's the part for me that's exciting is it's not we're in a mid-level conference and then we're getting to that point and we're having to raise our level of play. We raised our level of play throughout the SEC conference uh, weekends. So then now when we go into that part of the year, we'll be prepared. I know at your press conference, I got to talk to, to Ian Kinsler, and you know, obviously he had a lot of uh, involvement in getting yes. you here. Kind of tell me how important the alums are. I mean, he was telling me he's excited about how you're going to get alums involved. You obviously know quite a few of yes. them. How important is getting the, the alums back involved in, in this program? It's huge because they will give our current players an understanding of what this place means to them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one of the things that I challenge our alums to do is connect with our players and talk to them about that. And I want our guys to understand when you're playing, there's people out there that bleed black and gold. Um, you're here and you're in the moment and you're looking at yourselves, but understand people out there waving the flag and when we're winning, they're really, really happy about it and we're losing, they probably wear it worse than you do. Um, and so I think if we can internalize that with our current players and understand that this is about what is across their chest, that they'll put us in a position to be successful. Mm -hmm. I know Desiree was talking about, you know, the moment that she realized that she loved Mizzou and she said the same about you. You know, what stood out to you about your conversations with Desiree and really her buy-in moving forward with this baseball program? She's intense. Mm -hmm. You know, she wants to win. Uh, she wants to win at a high level and she wants mm -hmm. to support. Um, and so I think when you have a leader who has the same passion about being successful as you do, but more importantly understands what the root of that success is and it's in the people, you can't ask for a better situation than that. Mm -hmm. I know everyone was making a big talk before you came here about the facilities and you said to you, to you it doesn't matter if you had the basics of what you need, you know, kind of take me through that mindset. I think, if, again, if, what we need is opportunity, right? right. And, and so um, as I told some of the guys that we've been talking to, I, made sure just in case something changed I went out and measured and from the mound <laughs> to home plate is still 60 feet 6 inches and, mm -hmm. and from home to first base it's 90 feet and so our balls aren't any different our bats aren't any different our gloves aren't any different <clears throat> so now it's about what do you do when you step in between the lines whether we have 10,000 people or where we have two people. Mm -hmm. Can you go out and put yourself in a position and compete and give yourself a chance to win and if you can then we're gonna be okay. If you need all those external factors to put you in a position to be competitive, what are you going to do when you don't have those? Yeah. Do you just toss it in and I can't compete? And, and it's more about what they're going to do as they grow up and be men yeah. and fathers uh, than it is just about what they're doing now. Because in real life, if you don't have all the things necessary, is are we going to make excuses because I don't get it done? Well, then now you got to go home and tell your family, well, yeah. I didn't have a crowd in front of me, so I'm sorry I lost my job. Nobody's going to want to hear that. So again, what we need and what we have to thrive off of is opportunity. Well, I, I'm sure you've seen a full Taylor Stadium. I've seen a full Taylor Stadium. It gets to be a special place when yes. it's full. What's your message to fans? As you know, obviously your first season's still a little bit a ways away, but what's your message to fans getting out there to Taylor Stadium? Come out and support. You'll like what you see. You're going to like how we play. Uh, we're going to represent 
uh, Missouri well um, and the mindset of the people that are here in Missouri and just be grinders and get after it. And I think every fan that comes out will enjoy that process. we got kids camp going on right now and just seeing those kids and seeing them all out there wearing that black and gold and how excited they are. Um, so we want to be able to embody that on the field. And I think if we have that type of environment, it'll be a great opportunity for our guys to go out and be successful. Was it sunk in for you yet wearing the black and gold? I know we were talking about seeing your name played on your office earlier. Is it sunk in for you yet? Oh, it, it, it definitely has. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you know it, again that part of it is it takes you right back to where mm -hmm. I was in 2015 and um, being comfortable and excited about what it is that we're doing and knowing that we're going to go out and represent this to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, finally, tell me what the next few weeks are going to look like. You're talking staff. You know, I'm sure it's going to be a hectic few weeks getting moved up here from Memphis and all that. It, recruit, recruit, recruit. Right. Um, you know, that's that's the biggest thing that we're going to be doing these next few weeks is is not only making sure that we have what we need to go out and be successful this year, but what we need to have as we move forward and getting the right people in place. Well, I appreciate you making time and your busy schedule to come hang out with us. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Awesome. For the rest of you guys, we'll be right back after the break.